Today I'd like to speak to you about cultural humility as an imperative of Christ's emptying in Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses 5 through 8. Paul, in his instructions to the Philippian church, says that we must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up or limited his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. I wanted to read that scripture to you as a prelude to, um, to tell you that I could cry these days about what's going on in our culture, in our politics, or in our language, in our mean attitudes towards one another, and yes, I'm also part of the problem. We would do well to foster cultural humility which reemphasizes central truths of the gospel embraces the church, church's mission and the Imago Dei towards radical, courageous conversations and inclusions. We would do well to foster cultural humility, which acknowledges the profound limitations which accompany our personal and collective truths, experience, and awareness. We'd also do well to foster a cultural humility, which demonstrates an ability to learn from, celebrate, and to embrace each other in our respective traditions, uniqueness, perspective, and brokenness. Many Christian authors have said that God's people are called to live among the tension between unity and diversity. In other words, we're called to mystery and not to mastery. If we're to master anyone, it is ourselves by learning how to, to accept limitations, to acknowledge our profound deficiencies, and to learn from one another. Tangi in 2000 conducting extensive research on humility, its theological and psychological, through theological and psychological literature, on humility and found that humility represents wisdom, is a key to progress, and is characterized in open and receptive mind. An ability to acknowledge one's mistakes, and I would add limitations, an openness to new ideas and advice, and keeping oneself in proper perspective, meaning that none of us are omnipotent, none of us are omniscient, and none of us are omnipresent. I'd also add and expand upon the ideas that Christ's humility implies that we are to Embrace a willingness to be impacted and changed by the encounter with others who are creating God's image and image bearers. A courageous and respectful willingness to enter into uncertainties, ambiguities, and the mysteries of life with each other while admitting our limitations, our fallen tendencies to demand certainty, and our profound need for each other. Cultural humility involves ethical and relational and moral an ethical, relational, and moral predisposition, vantage, and stance that the concerns and well-beings of others are my very own, that others in creating God's image are like my own flesh, as one local pastor says. They are my neighbor, and an acknowledgement of our profound limitations, uniqueness, and desperate and God-given need for interdependence in all endeavors and we are, as we are created human and devoid like I said, of omniscience, omnip omnipresence, and omnipotence. Like Jesus' example, I and you have a lot to put aside that hinders us from loving one another, understanding one another, and accepting one another. But we also have a unique opportunity uh, in putting those things aside to embrace one another and to enter into the mysteries. And again, I would like to say the only mastery that we can do is not of anyone else, but of ourselves. I hope you'll join me in that sacred calling.